Good morning, Larry Town Baptist Church. Good to have you this morning and uh, here to share with us. I, I do want to share something with you. Uh, as I've been kind of watching uh, on, on TV some of the things that's happened with coronavirus and everything, we, we are beginning to see a lot of our healthcare workers get sick. Uh, and so I, I would uh, challenge you and ask that you would pray for them, uh, those that are on the front line battling uh, this uh, virus. Uh, and so it's not just the ones that are getting sick outside the hospital, but of course they have to go in every day. And I thank God for those people, man, who are willing to sacrifice and uh, put it on the line to heal those that are already sick. Uh, putting their self in, in harm's way and doing that. And so I would just ask you to continue to lift them up and remember them, that God would hedge them up uh, and keep them safe during this time. We're going to get through this, no doubt. God's going to see uh, see us through it. God uh, takes care of His people. I believe that. Uh, and so by faith and by prayer, by a nation coming together and, and, and using the talents that God has given us, we will get through this time. If you have your Bibles this morning, I'm, I'm going to be in Matthew uh, chapter 27, uh, verse 22. I know this is uh, uh, this is Palm Sunday, but uh, I, I'll probably be the only preacher that won't preach uh, that sermon today, uh, as I've been on a series getting us on the way to the cross. Uh, and so I just want to share with you uh, uh, something that God laid on our hearts. Uh, we're about to read uh, uh, this one verse that we're dealing with is uh, Jesus before Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. And while Jesus admitted to being the king of the Jews, he refused to answer the accusation of the chief priests and the elders. We find that in Matthew 27 and verses 11 and 12. A matter of fact, uh, it, it, Pilate marveled at the fact that there were so many accusations against Jesus and he wouldn't say a word. Uh, matter of fact, in our day and time, if we don't answer accusations, then someone would say that we're automatically guilty. Uh, and yet, Pilate didn't do that, and uh, we'll, we'll see that in the story that is here. Matter of fact, what Pilate done was sought to release Jesus. If you remember the story there, uh, when, when Jesus wouldn't answer anything, the only thing that he would say that he admitted to was being king of the Jews, and that was uh, true, and the fact that not only king of the Jews, but king of this world. Uh, but Pilate wanted to release him, and, and Pilate really marveled greatly in the fact that Jesus, with all the accusers that would, was coming against him, the accusations that was coming against him, that he remained in Sodom. Uh, and, and so we, you know, in, in verse 13 of 27, and this is kind of just leading up to this, it says, Then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witnessed against thee? And he answered him to never a word, insomuch that the governor marveled, uh, and that fact, uh, again, uh, in our day and time, people would say we were guilty. We, if, we, if we don't cry out against the injustice, uh, then somehow we uh, agree to that. But, but then we get to the point of what I want to preach on today. Because as, as Pilate had listened to everything uh, that had been said and all the accusations that was there, uh, that was being said, there's a verse 22 uh, that I think in the world that we live in today, especially in the times that we live in with the virus that we have and all that's going on, it is a great question that Pilate asked that I believe the world needs to, uh, we need to ask the world, we need to ask everybody today, and, and we've got to come to an answer for that question. Okay? So if you would, rise to your feet. Again, we're going to read one verse from Matthew 27, verse 22. Can I share with you, there's something in this world greater than you and I. Amen. There's something in this world that is greater than coronavirus. Listen to the question. As Pilate now has digested all that has been said, all the accusations that has been brought against Jesus, but not only that, but, but Jesus, how he reacted to all of this. Listen to what the Bible tells us. 27 verse uh, 22, chapter 27 verse 22, it says this. It says, and Pilate said unto them, that crowd that was there, here's the question. What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? Amen. What a question. What shall I do with Jesus? And of course, we know the answer they gave was let him be crucified. But I'm telling you, in the day that we live in, in the world that we live in, in the society that we live in, what a great question we need to ask this day. What shall I do with Jesus? 
May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Will you bow with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we come today and we ask ourselves the question. In the times that we live in, a great question by Pilate the governor. What then shall I do with Jesus? I believe today, Father, it is one that every person must ask. God, I believe this, that there is, there is different ways that people answer this question. And God, we want to look at that today. Uh, uh, but more importantly, I, I pray that each and every one that hears this sermon, that God, they make it personal to them. And they ask their, their self the question, what shall I do with Jesus? Even in this time, in, in this moment, in this days that we live in, God, your word tells us that in the end time, there will be earthquakes and pestilence. God, there will be diseases and There'll be uh, things, dear Heavenly Father, that uh, men cannot understand. God, your Bible tells us the season will be messed up. And the only way we would know is by the, the, the fig tree. God, God, we see all of the things that your word has told us. The prophecies of, of the coming of Christ and, and the birth pains that must happen before the end time. God, we see it in our lifetime right now. And so as we see that in the uncertainty of the, the, the world that we have today, and many people that are asking questions about viruses and, 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 and trying to make sense of all what is happening in our society today, not just our society, but the world, one of the questions that we need to stop and ask is what shall I do with Jesus? God, just give us the word today. God, may we apply it to our hearts, our lives. May we ask that question today. And how we answer that has a lot to do with this life and the life to come. Just be with us, watch over, keep us, forgive us where we fail you so many times, for we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated there. Uh, a matter of fact, it is a question. There's some questions that a lot of times that people ask that go, goes unanswered. Matter of fact, this, I believe, is a question that we cannot run away from. And the society that we live in, in the days that we live in, in the time that we live in, it is a valid question that should be asked uh, uh, to everyone that is uh, on the face of the earth this day. Uh, we shall all one day, the Bible tells us, that we should all one day stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And so if that's the case, we cannot run away from the question, what then shall I do with Jesus Christ? Listen, uh, His Word will be the standard by which we are judged, no doubt. The Bible tells us that, and so uh, I just, as we go through this today, I want you to think about what shall you do with Jesus Christ in this day, in this time, in this hour. So let's begin to, this morning with a sermon, and a sermon, and the first point that I want to make is, is this, what has Jesus offered unto you? What has Jesus offered unto the world? What has Jesus offered? I have to offer when we ask that question, what shall I do with Jesus? Is there an offering by Jesus? Is there an outcome from Jesus? Is there something uh, that could be gained uh, by answering this question? If it, if it is, uh, uh, as I said, it is a question that we must answer because of uh, what Jesus has to offer. Now, I will share this with you, and there's a lot of other things that we could look at. But the first thing is this, is that Jesus has, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a statement, but then I'm going to break it down. Jesus has provided the ability. One of the things that he has offered to you and I is that he has provided the ability. Now, let's stop and break that down, because I, as, as I mentioned before, he is a provider. And so Jesus has provided and here's what I am convinced in the world that we live in today with the coronavirus that we have and the struggles that we have with the financial things. One of the things that we're finding out is a lot of things that people put their faith and trust in and a lot of things that people thought they couldn't live without and a lot of things that people spent their time on, whether it be sports or other things in life, kind of been taken away and we see that all of those things that we thought was important is not as important as it once was. Uh, it is why I believe that when, when God said, I, you know, I, I, I can give man anything, uh, whatever man's needs, I provide all needs, uh, that the, the need of mankind is spiritual, not material things. We're seeing that as this virus has taken over, we're seeing some of those things that we've uh, enjoyed and some of the freedoms that we've had and some of the things that, uh, that we've taken for granted now have been taken away. We see that they're not as important as we once thought they were. I thought about when Paul was shipwrecked, and we were discussing this before the service started. Uh, when Paul was shipwrecked, if you remember, when Paul got on the ship, there was a lot of cargo on the ship, and 
the storm came and it began to break apart the boat so much so that they began to gird the ship. They began to wrap the boat with ropes trying to hold it together. And all the cargo was there. They began to throw it over the side of the boat. Uh, I say it to say this. What, when they left, that cargo was precious to them. But once they got out in the middle of the storm, what happened was that cargo wasn't quite as important as it once was. And so they threw it up. What life became the most important thing. One of the things that I hope and pray is that we get back in our nation and we understand the importance and the value of life. That's every life. That's unborn life. That's your life, my life. That's the elderly life. That, that we, we begin, and maybe it's a time that God has now brought us to a point where we're looking at the value of life and we see the value of life and that God has slowed us down and has stopped us uh, so that we can see that God is a provider. He's the giver of life, but also life is precious uh, in the society that we live in. God provides us with everything that we need uh, uh, through Jesus Christ. He has provided, listen, there's a uh, Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah, if you go back in 9, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, if you remember that scripture when Isaiah is prophesying about Jesus Christ being born, you remember the words that Isaiah said? He said that the government, he said, unto you uh, is born this day uh, a child. And he said, and the government, listen to this, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Are we seeing some of that today in our lifetime? Are we seeing, listen, uh, uh, how, how the, uh, the government can collapse and how, how things uh, can, can change in an instant and, and what you and I find in the comfort sometimes and, and peace of our own government, all of that can be taken away and, and the economy can come to a screeching halt. Uh, Isaiah saw this one, he said, and the government will be on his shoulder. He is going to be the wonderful counselor. He is going to provide, hey, Hey, he's going to be a provider. I see that in what Isaiah said. And you and I have a wonderful counselor that we can go to in our anxiety. And I know there's a lot of fear. Hey, I understand out there when husband and wife are working and people are living paycheck to paycheck. And now that paycheck has stopped. I, I can understand the worry and the anxiety of how we're going to pay the bills, how we're going to feed our children. I can see all of that. And yet in our anxiety, we have one that we can run to that is a, a counselor. I love that. Uh, how, how he can get us through this time. He can calm our fears. Uh, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, there is no greater name than that. Uh, listen, even, even the demons stand and shake. And so uh, as Pilate asked that question, what shall I do with Jesus? I want you to know today that Jesus is a provider. Amen. He's a provider. He's a wonderful counselor. And as a matter of fact, Isaiah said it. He's the mighty God. Uh, I, I think about that, man, that, that you and I, as Jesus has told us, that he wouldn't leave us alone, uh, and that he wouldn't forsake us. And, and can I, sh I share this with you, that, that, that uh, listen, you're on the mind of God, that God knows you, and God cares for you, uh, and God has the answer for us, and uh, God looks down on the nations, we see that, and God has blessed nations, and, and truly God... Uh, God's judgment has fallen on nations, uh, uh, but in the end, God's plan and, and, and God's uh, uh, provisions will happen in our life and in, in this time of the nation. And, and really, it's going to be, I believe, it's going to be a testimony of God's goodness and people's going to come back to God. And, and listen, the church is going to, to rally at this time and at this point. And it's going to be one of those points in history that you and I can, can share with people. Remember that time when? In 2020, when when you know God uh, provided for our nation, God provided for our churches, and God provided for our people, and so Jesus Christ is the provider. He's the mighty God, is what Isaiah 9 6. He he went on and he said this. He said he is the Prince of Peace. If there was ever a time, I saw a thing the other day, and, and my wife brought this to mention. We don't see on the news right now of all the killings and murders and things like that on the TV right now. Uh, we, we've been overtaken. It's given us a time uh, as all of this when people have been quarantined to their house. And, and listen, families now are getting back together, and, and people are talking and sharing in family time. And, and I'm just telling you, God kind of put us on pause. God kind of give us the time to reflect on who we are and what we're doing. And I just want to share today that Jesus is a provider. When we ask, what shall I do with Jesus? Understand, he's a provider. But not only just a provider, but it says that Jesus has provided the ability. 
uh, I want you to know that the ability that he has to get us through this time and the ability to answer the prayer of even a small child. I, I, I have been reading uh, about how some of the, the small children are praying in, in this time. And, and I love that fact uh, uh, that, that, that you know, he's a provider. But, but the ability that he's given you and I and the ability to overcome and the ability to hear prayer and the ability of repentance and the ability, listen, that, that God listens to even his children and, and the small children that, that God is has the ability that nations can rise that God has the ability to do all these things that the Bible shares that even Isaiah was able to see that the government would be upon his shoulder and, and all that he was able to say back uh, you know thousands of years before Jesus actually came I, I, I just want you to see the ability that that God is going to show and, and that God has in the troubled times that you and I live in and so Pilate in the troubled time that he was in, when he was head of the government, as Isaiah said, the government would be upon his shoulder. And the angry mob that was there, and Pilate having the difficult decision. And like you and I have a virus, there was a virus, I believe, in that day and time of them wanting to kill Jesus Christ. And, and yet Pilate even, I believe, understood uh, that Jesus was a provider and had the ability to do things. Now, if nothing else, uh, uh, you and I know this, according to the scripture of God, that, w- that he has the ability uh, to, to provide for us a, an abundant life filled with with peace. In John 10.10 10, it says this, and man, if, if this is ever true in our lifetime, it's in this lifetime now. In John 10.10 10, what it says, it says the, the thief comes to, to steal and to kill and to destroy. Oh, uh, we, we, every time we turn on the TV we see more death and we're living in a troubled time. The thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus says, but I come, what? To give life and to give it what? To give more abundant life. To give it a, a more abundant life. A life that is abundantly. Uh, that we can have that peace through Him. Uh, and so I want you to know today that for all of us that live in a time of, of, of anxiousness, that we can pray to the, uh, to the Father. That, that Jesus stands there with us. And that you and I know that we have uh, the ability through Jesus Christ that we can have a life that is filled with a true peace that comes from Jesus Christ. Not only that, but in a time of this, listen, the salvation. And, and we know that Jesus provides salvation from, from sin, but also, listen, salvation from ourselves. And sometimes we make the wrong decisions and we do uh, uh, things that are not right and uh, our actions are wrong. And yet Jesus saves us even from our own self, from the actions that we take. And, and listen, if we ever needed the hand of God over our nation, we need it now to, uh, to make sure that, listen, our leaders and uh, those in the White House and the doctors and all of those that are making decisions, that they would make the right decisions, listen, not just based on science, but would make the right decision based on God, and that God would give them the unction and the power to make the decisions that need to be made. All of us need to be praying for that, that there is a salvation, that God saves us from ourselves, that God saves us from a virus, that God saves us from making wrong decisions. Uh, listen, whether that be physically, medically, or economically in our society today, that we find salvation, and the salvation that we find is in one, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we know that uh, also, but not only that, but that He will cleanse us from our sins. And I believe like the cleansing of our sin, He can cleanse our nation and uh, listen, he can cleanse our country and our world from this virus that is there. See, he provides the ability for all of these things to happen. Listen, in, in, in Luke uh, uh, 19.10, it says that he seeks and saves that which was lost. I, I don't know if you've ever noticed that statement, that, that verse there in Luke when it says uh, he seeks and saves. I love the fact that Jesus is seeking. I love the fact uh, that he is looking. I, I love the fact that he sees. He, it says that he seeks and he saves. See the ability, he's provided the ability. But notice the last one, it said that which was lost. It didn't say that which is lost, that which was lost. In other words, there, there is a past tense there, uh, knowing that uh, not only that he sees it, but he, 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 can, he can seek it, he can save it, and that which was lost no longer is lost. And uh, I love how that is written. And so we see that, in, and I believe that in our society today. But not only that, the Bible says this. It says 
that he cleanses us. And, and what is uh, and, and, and I believe 1 John 1, 7, it says this. It says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship listen, with each other. But, but more importantly, we have fellowship with God. And man, I'm just telling you, this, this, this pause that we have, this time that God has, has stopped us and, and slowed us down so that we can really see uh, uh, who we are and, the things that are happening here, because again, everything that happens in our life comes through the hand of God. Uh, God knows that uh, this coronavirus didn't surprise God. It may have surprised us, but it didn't surprise Him, right? And, and, and so it says we have fellowship one with another. It, it, I, I see people who are spending more time in prayer than they have in a long time. I, I see people now are, are reading scripture, and on the TV now we're seeing, uh, uh, you know, we're seeing the preachers preach, and uh, on, on the internet we're seeing preachers preach, and uh, we're seeing a lot of the movement of God and a lot of uh, sermons being out there that people can get a hold of. We have fellowship one with another, and His blood cleanses us from all sin. Uh, I just want you to know today that he, he is a provider. He provides the ability. Not only that, but the second thing, real quick, as we look at this, when, G when, when Pilate asked this question, what shall I do with Jesus? He, he provides the ability, uh, the ability for what now? Uh, for abundant life, for salvation, for cleansing, all of that. Uh, but the other thing is, is that Jesus has proclaimed the, the conditions of those. You know, in the Bible, there's a lot of if and thens. If you do this, then this will happen. And, and so there's a, a he's proclaimed. I, I, I love that. The proclamation uh, uh, that, that you and I read in the word of God. And, and that in our troubles and in our struggles and, uh, in life and in the sin that we live in, this sin riddled world. And, and listen, the heartache that we live in. Uh, that there is a proclamation that there is a name that is above all names. There's a proclamation that Jesus, even Pilate said this, what shall I do with Jesus the Christ? He called him that Jesus the Christ. He, he, he understood that title that was there, right? Or, or used that title that was there. Uh, Jesus has proclaimed the condition. Listen, even in our nation, the uh, uh, scripture that is always used, if, if my people will humble, if my people will humble themselves, right? Turn from their wicked ways. Then I will heal uh, their nation. Oh, there's uh, uh, the proclamation of the conditions that are out there. And even in salvation, even in the life that you and I live, we know there's things like, listen, uh, uh, he's proclaimed the condition in the fact that you and I must believe in him in order to be saved. We have to, be, uh, we have to believe in him. Look at what John 8, 24 says. Yeah, well, if you put that up for us, it says this. He says, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. I, I'm just saying the condition is there. It is, it is the proclamation has been made by Jesus Christ. That if you don't turn from your sin, if you don't listen, repent from your sin, you're going to die in your sins. No doubt. And so there is that if then uh, We've got to believe in Him. We've got to we got to repent of our sins. We've got to uh, confess our faith, uh, even before men. We've got to confess uh, confess our faith, and uh, you know, be baptized and remain faithful unto death. All of these things are that if then, and and, and so we find that uh, we can cry out to the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, because there's a proclamation and the condition is, is that you and I, listen, we need to pray. You and I, we need to be on our knees praying for our nation. We need to pray for our church. We need to pray for our people. We need to pray for the world and those on the other side of the world. Uh, there is conditions that you and I, that God is expecting from us that we be faithful and that we pray and that we call upon the Lord, that we turn from our wicked way as the Bible says. We turn from our wicked way and we cry out to Him. Uh, then, then God would hear our prayers and what is that? He will heal our land. I think about those that were standing there at the, at the foot of Pilate and Pilate was uh, making this proclamation uh, himself of who Jesus was and, and the condition. He, even he offered a condition. He said, I will release unto you Jesus or I will release unto you Barabbas. And of course, uh, we know how they chose and what they chose on that day. May you and I be faithful in the calling that God has called us to understand the proclamation and the conditions, the conditions that we live in and the condition that God has placed on us that we do our part during this time. Not only that, but Jesus has predetermined the alternative. In the scripture that we just looked at, there is an alternative if we don't. Uh, and so Jesus has 
predetermined. Uh, uh, it is chiseled in stone. It is written in His Word. It is the very thought of God from the very foundation of this world that Jesus Christ is who He says that He is and He was going to, and, he, and He did what He said He was going to do. And, and, and for you and I, listen, we have the Word of God that has been predetermined that these conditions, these things would happen in our life. If we reject Him, then we will die in our sins to face the terrible consequences that the Bible says. But on the other side of that, all the Bible tells us and, and the conditions and, and the ability for Him to provide and the predetermined alternative is this, is that, but if we believe in Him, that's an alternative that was already laid out. If we believe in Him, Right? If we believe in Him, how He can heal our land. If we believe in Him, how uh, sin can be dealt with uh, by the blood that is applied in our life. That all of that has been predetermined by God. And so that if we believe in Him, listen to this, we receive, as you and I know, uh, everlasting life. That has already been determined uh, uh, if we do those things. And so uh, I love the fact that Jesus has predetermined uh, the alternatives. And, and listen to this, when coronavirus is, 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 is wreaking havoc on the world, uh, the alternative is, is that Jesus, we know Jesus can save life and, and Jesus can give life and, 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 and listen, we, we know we've lost a lot of people, but here's the fact, there's a lot of people that's overcome. There's a lot of people that uh, has made it through this virus. Uh, uh, something like 98% of the people that has contra contracted this disease ha has made it through. Oh, how I love the fact that God is still in control. Amen. And listen, a virus can reap the habit uh, that, that, that some uh, had feared. Uh, and, and I'm just telling you that, that God is still in control. So then with all that being said, let me ask this question. That Pilate asked the people standing there that day. What will you do with Jesus? I want to share that in our nation, one of the things that I, I believe is this, is that sometimes painful things, sometimes painful things can teach us lessons that we didn't even know we needed to learn. I'll say that again. Sometimes, sometimes painful things can teach us lessons that we didn't think we needed to know. And maybe this is one of those times in our lives. What will you do with Jesus? Well, can I share with you some of the things that people have tried and maybe those in society today, if they were asked that question, they would maybe try some of these things. But again, uh, it has to be answered. If, if eternity is based on that question, if we, all of us will stand before God, then we have to ask ourselves our question. In the middle of this virus, we have to ask ourselves our question, what will we do with Jesus? In the middle of an economic downturn, we must ask ourselves this question, what will we do with Jesus? And so, as we think about that question, let me share with you what, what some people have tried to do. Well, here's what Pilate tried to do. Pilate asked that question because he wanted someone else to make the decision. Pilate was asking that question, trying to pass the choice on to others that could make that decision for him. Sometimes I think we're guilty of that. Sometimes the society, the world that we live in, we're, we're guilty of doing something like that. We try to pass it on to someone else. I don't want to handle that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to think about that. I'll let so-and-so do that. I'll, let, I'll, I'll listen to see what so-and-so says about that. I'll, I'll see what how they react to that, and then I'll make my choice on that. And listen, there's a lot of choices in life that we have to make, and a lot of times maybe that, that'll work in some of the choices but when it comes to Jesus, the choice has to be yours. You can't pass it on to anyone else. Trying to let others decide for us what we will do or believe about Jesus is dangerous. For Pilate even found that out because the answer that Pilate thought would be given on that day was not given as they had cried out, crucify him. Matter of fact, Pilate even asked the question, crucify him, even though I find nothing wrong. He thought that by saying that statement, they would change their mind. And, and they only went the, the louder with it just to crucify him, crucify him. So we can't let others make our decisions. Again, sometimes things that are painful in our life are to teach us or uh, to give us a lesson that we didn't think that we needed to know. The second thing that people sometimes do uh, is this, is that 
uh, like, like the people in Athens did uh, when they were faced with the decision in Acts chapter 17. They just mock. They just think if they mock things or, or, or make light of things or listen, when you ask that question, what shall I do with Jesus? There are some out there that would mock the very name of Jesus. They won't answer the question. They're just going to mock him. They're going to they're gonna, uh, you know, kind of uh, maybe even do it lightheartedly. I don't know. Well, in the seriousness of that question, uh, they kind of just, uh, uh, just kind of passively like a lot of things that we do in life. Sometimes we don't give our whole heart into things. We just kind of passively go through the motion uh, of things, motion in life. And, and that's not the way we, we have to handle this question. We can't just mock it. Or, uh, listen, many took the route that they, uh, in the days of Jesus, they tried to do that rather than, than make an effort to decide uh, what they should do. They simply laughed about it, tried to laugh it off. And a lot of times in our life, hey, when things happen, we try to joke about it. We try to laugh it off. But that doesn't take away the, the, the question. It doesn't take away the problem or the anxiety or, or whatever's going on in our lives. You can't just laugh it away. It's for it's still there. Some things you have to deal with, you have to answer. This is a question that must be answered. Felix tried to wait on a more convenient time. And when he was talking with Paul, and I'm just telling you that uh, people do things, uh, a lot of different things. In Acts 24, 25, you go check that out. Felix, listen, this is another common reaction that people have, especially with a question like this. Uh, I'll just answer it another day, hoping that, that maybe... That through the, through a delay, or, or or hope maybe that day will never come. They will never be faced that somebody will forget about that. Or, or, you know that they won't have to deal with that. So they hope that through the, through delay they won't have to make that choice. I, I'm telling you, people, we're living in a time and a day where we've got to make a choice about Jesus. Amen. Either He is who He is, who He says that He is, or He's not. We gotta, as people, as a nation, we gotta stop and we gotta ask ourselves the question as a nation. As we, even on the Easter season, the journey to the cross, ask ourselves the question, what then shall I do with Jesus? We cannot escape the fact that one day we will be judged by Him. Now I know there are folks that don't believe that, but, it, but the Word of God is true and we have enough evidence in the Word of God and the things that it has said and, and, uh, and what we read and, and the prophecy that has been prophesied that you and I know that the Word of God is truth because it is all played out. Uh, uh, you can test it. Time, it has been time tested, the Word of God. And, the word, and so the Word of God tells us that we're going to stand in judgment one day. and So we know that we're going to be judged by Him. So the, the world is going to be judged. The world is going to stand before Him. What then shall I do with Jesus? Well, if I could close today as we think about going to the cross, if I could think about the ability that, that He has given, uh, given that, that He has provided the ability, listen, for, for abundant life and and salvation and cleansing uh, uh, through His blood, those things that He's given unto us to, uh, by that, what shall we do then? What, what are the things that we shall do? What is the answer to the question? What shall we do? Well, I believe just this right here. Number one, accept His gracious offer of salvation. I, I believe in a world... Where, 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 listen, we ought to cry out to God. I, I, I believe in this time, if, if, if any other time we see how precious life is and how things can change in a moment, and you and I need something, we need something concrete to hold on to, and Jesus is the provider. He's the ability for, for us to find salvation from this world and, and from sin and, and from the disease that is out there. And so, listen, it is, it is a gracious offer that He's given unto us. The gracious offer of salvation that uh, he didn't have to but he did he went to the cross for you and I that we accept his gracious offer hey his offer of repentance his offer listen of love his offer of mercy his offer of healing healing our land his his offer of when we're anxious his offer of you know when we're uncertain that he can give us certainty that he can give us that peace well the things that God offers to us I really believe is what mankind needs uh, desperately needs in the life that we live today and so, what He has to offer to you and I, we need to accept that gracious offer. Not only that, but as His people, we need to become His disciples, committed to, to doing what He has commanded you and I to do. For this is how He says, Jesus says, I know how I, I, uh, my disciples, because they do my commandments. What shall you do with Jesus? I pray that you're doing 
His commandments, that you're following the teachings of Jesus Christ. And then one of the other things the Bible tells us in 2 Peter 3, 18, it tells us that we are to grow. We're to grow in grace and knowledge of, of Jesus Christ. And, and, and I pray, man, that in this time, in this hour, one of the things that I've asked is in, the, in, 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 in what, the, what we've seen going on in the world is this. God, what are you trying to teach us? God, what are you trying to show us? God, I understand in this Easter season, isn't it, isn't it amazing that it's during this Easter season that we have this coronavirus? And, 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 and I'm just telling you, it just, it just shows me the importance of the cross. It, it shows me the importance of, of the work that Jesus done through His blood on the cross to, to save mankind. Because there's a lot of things. Against it. Listen, uh, again, what I was about to say, the, 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 the devil's come to kill, to, to, to steal, and, and to destroy and we live in a world full of, of killing and stealing and destroying and, and disease and, and earthquakes. Uh, you know, the Bible says before the end of time there'll be earthquakes in, in diverse places. And, and we just see all of this playing out according to the, to the Word of God. God, what are you trying to teach us? What are you trying to show us? Listen, as an individual, I, I want to know as an individual, God, what can I learn from this time? And, and God, does it drive me to my knees so that I pray more? And uh, God, am I setting your word more? And uh, God, am I seeking more? Because if you seek, you'll find. As an individual, God, what are you trying to teach me? But not only that, but God is a church. Well, what are you trying to teach? Because I believe there's many, multiple facets of this. God is a church uh, when we can't meet the way that we once had. And maybe we've taken meeting as a church for granted sometimes. And, and we see how all of that can go away. And, and, and I'm just telling you, what are you trying to teach us as a church? And how we are to be a lighthouse in the community and to stand upon the promises of God when it seems like there is no hope and, and there's so much destruction and death around us. God, what are you trying to teach us? As a church, you know, as, as individuals, as families, and as families are spending more time together now and uh, enjoying the time together, and families uh, uh, have slowed, been able to slow down and, and maybe even share meals together, which we've kind of gotten away from, or sitting on the front porches carrying on conversation. God, what are you trying to teach us as families, as, as churches? And, and then you can go out into the state. God, what are you trying to teach us as state and, and nation? And then not only that, but man, it doesn't, it doesn't show you the power of God that, that God operates on a global, on a global scale, on a, on a universal scale, uh, because He created all things. He knows all things. He knows the answer to all things. And so, God, what are you trying to teach us even on a global scale? And then the other thing that we ought to do, I believe, uh, that would help us in this time, what should we do with the name of Jesus, is that we need to develop the mind of Christ. I, I hope and pray that we as Christian people, we as uh, people of the faith, that, that we see things and we think of things uh, in God's way, um, you know, in the attitude of, of sacrifice, and in the attitude of service uh, to God. That's what Jesus came as a sacrifice, and Jesus came as a service to people. I pray that we too, in this time, that God would uh, give us a, a, a sight uh, to operate in that way, uh, in the mind of Christ, in service, uh, and in sacrifice, uh, one for another. Uh, we, we've seen the feeble attempt by, by Pilate in asking that question, uh, by Pilate and others who answered the question, what shall I do with Jesus? Uh, my, my question to the world today, my question to our church today, my question to me today is what do I do with Jesus? Let us not think that, uh, that we can get by with not answering the question, that we can get by simply by ignoring Him or ignoring the question or simply by not doing anything actively uh, at, at all. Uh, I'm just telling you, it, it begs of you and I, it begs of the world, what shall I do with Jesus in this moment, in this time? In this difficulty, in this virus, in this moment before Easter, uh, you know, in this uh, week before Easter, in, the, in, in, in what God has shown us and where we are and God has put us and the things that we're seeing in the world and what the devil is trying to take away, all of those things, we must stop and ask the question, what shall I do with Jesus? For as Jesus said on another occasion, he who is not with me is against me. And he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Matthew 12, verse 30. Will you bow with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. 
God, we thank you for this moment that we could come and that we could share. And God, in this moment, in this time, in our society, in the life, in this moment that we live, God, the question has been asked, what shall I do with Jesus? It is through Jesus that we find our hope. It is through Jesus that we find our healing. We find healing of our sin. We find healing in our land. Pilate asked a very important question on that day. What shall I do with Jesus? Lord, I believe as we enter into this time that we celebrate Easter, it is a very important question that we must ask. In our society riddled with virus, in our society riddled with sin, in our society riddled with death and heartache, what shall we do with Jesus? God, in the life that we live here on this earth, what shall we do with Jesus? In our church, what shall we do with Jesus? In our prayer time, what shall we do with Jesus? Within our families, what shall we do with Jesus? God, uh, the question that has been asked by Pilate was one that needed an answer. And for those in that day, they cried out to crucify him. God, we cannot simply ignore that question. We cannot simply sit by and do nothing. It deserves, it must, if we are to stand before, if we're to stand before God in the, in the, in the, in the time to come, when this life is over, then God, we know that we have to answer the question, what shall I do with Jesus? What shall I do with His mercy? What shall I do with His grace? What shall I do with His love? What shall I do with His power? What shall I do in the fact that He is a provider? What shall I do in the fact that He is a proclaimer? What shall I do with the fact that He has predetermined? God, I, I, I pray that as I spend time in prayer, as I study Your Word, that God, I see the importance that that God, I understand that in, in the times that I need mercy, He is a provider of mercy and, and grace and, and comfort in a time of uncertainty. God, as a people and as a nation, what shall we do with Jesus? We shall cry out to Him. We shall seek salvation. We shall seek love and mercy and grace and all the things that He has the ability to provide. What shall I do? with Jesus. Just be with us, watch over, keep us, forgive us where we fail you, for we ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I'm going to ask as we stand.